The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, everyone. Friday, March the 11th, Tiger Technician's Hour. Dow, Dow is up 135 at 33,300 and, well, 3,000. 33,315. We're looking at it went right to the 14 period moving average. A little black uh, line right there is now sitting on the nine period exponential, the pink nine, exp nine period exponential moving average. And that is <coughs> still very negative because it's way underneath the 14. That means the cell mode is in pro uh, process. And uh, not only uh, is this very poor action considering the last three days where there should have been a move towards the 33,700. So far, with the rumor, the Putin rumor at 6.38 or something this morning that suddenly saw the, look at this, there's a 10 minute chart. It's just meandering here at the 42, 70 uh, ish area. Whoosh, it screams up. I thought, what on earth is that? Is that some fantastic uh, earnings announcement coming out of the uh, uh, for, you know, announcement? And the market just loves the announcement. Or what is it? So then I suddenly see that it's a Putin, um, something about Putin. Uh, if you're going to believe anything with that Putin says, well, good luck to you. Uh, all I can say is that I expected the rally to pull back a bit and within the period of five minutes to 10 to five minutes past 11, that would be the most important period for me of the day, other than the last 40 minutes of the, of the session. And the reason being, you've got that hysterical opening flurry You've got this huge pullback. I mean, look at this. Every bar just makes a version, makes a lower highs and lower lows, and eventually hits the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart and the E mini where it's sitting right now. This is the moment where you find new buyers saying, hey, you know, I just, you've got stocks that have been hammered. This is a really good chance to just put a little bit of money to work. And if enough fund managers do it, it'll just form some kind of a base here in the 4250s uh, for the E mini. And slowly but surely, during my show, maybe by 10.35 this morning, Eastern Time, you're suddenly looking at the E-mini holding quite nicely at 42.75, maybe 40, maybe a little higher than that. That says to me, good. And then what I'm expecting is that no matter how well it does intraday, if it can do well intraday, we don't even know yet, uh, because it really has to hold 42.50 key support. It goes under that. It's just too far away from the 200 period moving average. This is the E-mini I'm talking about. Um, to, to come back and then break all the way back up into those moving averages at the 42.80, 42.85 area. Whoops, there we go down again. Now we're down three. So this is really, a, for me, it's just critical. And it's critical for a number of reasons. It's also one of the reasons why I decided I would make time in the 11 to 12 hour, where Larry usually does his show, and Larry's uh, got a, a, a voice problem. So um, I thought if I, I was able to do it, I do want to, in any case, for my subscribers, we did some of it yesterday. I didn't finish enough of it, but I wanted to go through a lot of the commodities. Uh, I need to do that because I, I need the whole picture. I like to get the big picture on the weekend when I do my market overview video. Um, I'm I'm trying to cover as much as possible, and I, I've extended the time. I usually go now for about an hour. I try to get as much done for those people who are short on time for the for the current positions that we have, and then I go on to all these other areas. So this is what I'm looking at right now. The I'm going back to this market right here. These are the charts. On the left is the daily chart. In the middle is the weekly. On the right is the monthly chart. And we're going to go to the S&P because this is becoming more and more important. You know, I talk about a candle. I call, call it for years now, decades. I've called it the Chapman Wave Roman Candle. I've titled it the Chapman Wave under the umbrella of all my other techniques that I've uh, discovered and worked on. 
I, I can't call it propriety since I talk about it uh, openly, so it, it's, it's really it's out there. But what it is, is there's a candle that over the years, certainly that October high um, back in 2008 confirmed, well, I'd been doing this all the time, but that was one of those moments where it really confirmed for a candle to say, I've made a particular pattern and these are the criteria that this pattern requires if it's going to either break down or to break upside. So the candle we're talking about is this one I call the Chapman Wave Roman candle. The market opens towards the highs and usually it's high highs. It means whatever the high is on a look back period of a lot of bars, right? So it's a buy signal going to buy mode and now it's gotten to a point where it could be a little overbought. And in this case, the S&P hit 40, it had 4818.62. And that was just a tad higher than the 4808.93 high of December. So that's January. We closed the month with a candle that had an opening price. Let's do the whole thing. Opening price of 4778.14. Had a high of 4818.62. Plunge, I say plunge, I mean plunge, down to 4,222.62. And then intra-month, this can happen even intra-bar, intra-whatever it is, but intra-month, it's amazing, it managed to close at 4515.55. Now, the candle that I talk about is at a top, I have the same rule at a bottom. I also have the same rule if it's inverted. Uh, just on, if you're looking at these charts, look at the daily chart, going back to 4222.62, I believe that was the 24th of January. That's the candle, the rule of thumb was, if at any point for a shorter period, you always have to go to the shorter period, in this case it's daily chart, in a 120 minute chart, if we go for more than 90 minutes, Underneath the midpoint, in that case, I believe I called the midpoint right there, 4305. I think I said 4305. I might have said 4300, but 4305. That suggests that there's going to be a retest of the low or even lower than that. But if within two to three sessions, there is a push above, preferably a close above, but a push above that holds making that um, closing candle of the 24th, um, 4810.13. If there is a close below that, you gotta be careful. But if there is a move that pushes above it, that Roman candle can be a big, uh, the Roman candles, these are fireworks, it lights up. This could be a trigger for a move much higher. Well, we got that move in a rank of 45.95 and then it failed, for, it failed for many reasons, but it, it certainly, broke that pattern and was very positive Chapman Wave Roman candle at a potential low. It was also the 200 period moving average. I don't want to get into that. Now let's get back to the monthly candle. There's a reason why I'm spending some time on this. Because I would said, if at any point in the following month, I'm not going to go to a daily chart, I'm going to prefer to go to a weekly chart because this is so important. There is a close below the 14 period, sorry, the green nine period expansion moving average. And at the time that was at about uh, 40, 4438. That's a big negative. And I think that's, that's the capital recovery candle that depends the lower price. Well, we got the lower price. Um, Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Yes, uh, the, the questions are piling up. I know that, but I've been asked uh, by a number of people something about my temporary Roman candle. What exactly does it do? And I'm trying to explain because it's Technical Friday, and that's what we usually do on Technical Friday. So this can, remember, it opens near all-time highs or at least most recent high after a long move to the upside. Has just a tiny little wick and plunges to the downside, but then it manages close to close the same bar. This happens to be a monthly, it could be a one-minute bar. And it closes at least halfway to two-thirds above the low. If the following bar, I, I might give it two bars, sometimes three, but it, the best is when it works the next bar. If there is a close below halfway into the wick, on in a shorter time frame, talking about monthly, so I could have gone to daily, but I wanted to go, I went weekly, I wanted to be as conservative as possible. And there was a close uh, th that was in February, more than halfway and underneath the nine period exponential moving average, which is still really way above the 14 and still very strong. I said, you've got to be careful. Now what we've got is we've done exactly the same thing, but the month is what we've got, we're on the 11th of March. We've got, you know, weeks to go. Well, this is very interesting because I wanted to show this because look at this. Wheat did exactly the same thing on when I was talking to Tom on Tuesday when I was interviewing Tom on Tuesday afternoon. I said, he has this pattern that wheat opened, pulled back very gapped up after two gap, huge gap up days, limit up, didn't move, just limit up. The next uh, day, it opens just below, and then there must have been residual uh, um, uh, action. In sorry, it opens, it spikes up. I guess it was another limit up, and it went to uh, uh, thirteen sixty three and a half. This is on the continuous contract. That's not the the futures that you would trade. This is the continuous contract. It's like the root, and the high is exactly the same. So it didn't really have a wick, not even one quarter, not even a, a tick. But it had the pattern because it plunged down, took out all of the all the limit ups. I mean, you can imagine what the people said. Oh, I've got to get out. I've got to get out. They get out and they get out of the high of the day. And the next thing, they're getting out at 13 in the 1350 area. And what happens? It plunges down 
to 1164, round number, I love round numbers, 1164, but it then closes at 1286. The bulls and the bears are flummoxed. They have not a clue. But here's the Chapman Wave methodology. If the next session, particularly the next session, there is a shorter time frame, meaning the 120-minute chart, in my case, uh, that that has a bar that closes underneath, in this case, 1245, it's called 1246, there's a really good chance that within a day or two, you're going to not only test the left side low, that's the low of uh, 1164 round number, but you're going to go below it. Where's wheat today? Wheat is down 10 at 1076. Those people, they got trapped at the top. This is, I mean, Talk about ugly, but you're in in a you're in the futures market. You're whatever it is in the market. It is unlike uh, other things. You are you are playing with fire. You know that. So whatever you do, you've got to have plans that ameliorate to some extent whatever you're doing. So that 1357 down to today's low of 10.43. Now, I'm going to be doing Larry's show only because I want to go through a whole bunch of these things. A lot of commodities, I didn't quite finish them yesterday. We'll talk about them. I just want to talk about the candle. Why is it so important? So this is the third candle after the Roman candle. It's holding the 14 period moving average. From here, from here you could have a major turn down. You could have a major pop to at least 50% back to the 12.16. All sorts of things are happening. That's why I want you to do this and say, this is a work in progress. And when I was mentioning for the last week, this time into Monday, I was saying, in terms of money management, I had said uh, quite some time ago, if you are a long-term investor, that was the time to, if you're taking money off, like I'd recommended going into uh, late fall uh, in that whole uh, October, November period, I said, start putting money back because I'm thinking end of February, beginning of March is where we should get a normal, really strong rally, number one. Number two is within the context of markets, namely when last we were in a world war. It wasn't yesterday. It wasn't this, uh, this decade. It wasn't last decade. It was back in the 1930s, 1940s. So once there was an invasion of Ukraine, I said to myself, this is different. Now I have to look at whatever's happened up until now and say there could be an aberration of all sorts of things positive because crude oil was about to start moving it had already moved higher that wasn't i mean anybody who's blaming uh, 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 russia and ukraine for the high price of gasoline i don't want to get into that i'm just telling you it was headed higher in any case um, but we're in a different focus right now so i said take now if the last tranche was put in uh, two, three weeks ago, at the beginning of the month or the end of last month, I'm recommending take some of that off or even take off the last tranche. You want cash. You want to have cash for anything. And I might even recommend again to do that another time. Why? We have not been in this situation. You know, in markets, if you don't change to the direction of the market, if the current, if you're out on the water and the current changes, or there is a storm on the horizon and you ignore it, you ignore it at your peril. Do I care whether I'm right or wrong? No, I care if I'm alive. I care to have money in pocket to be able to play the game and last for decades. That was my point, and I wanted to make that point again. I've made it before. I'm doing it again. Now, number, number, number two in this whole aspect of the Chapman Wave Roman candle Look, we've had the big red candle at the top. We followed with another red candle, long wick lower, but closed above. We've got a long wick now that isn't as low as the um, 411, what was that? 4114.65 low of the 24th of um, February. 
but we're making lower lows. The MACDs turned down stochastics uh, now only at 76%, not at 80. On balance volumes pulled back sharply. But the 9 is still way above the 40, which says for this to go, the monthly chart in the S&P to go, is not even at a sell signal yet. But if it was to close sharply below um, 440, I'd say 4080, 4080, I have to think about this as a monthly potential sell signal. Not yet a monthly, because the 9 to get under the 14 will probably have to go to 38. Yeah, somewhere in the 38, uh, 30 area. And then you will get a, a really ugly cross over to the negative side from green to pink. I wanted to go through that because it's technical Friday and these are all the things that to me are really important. We come back and we'll go through bonds, we'll go through everything else. I'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, let's go back. So a whole bunch. Of, oh, let's get to the questions now. All right. We've got the, the S&P up 2.64. Uh, it's still struggling. The Dow is also struggling. It's up 154. You've got the Qs, etc. Now, I wanted to go back. I wanted to show you gold. Uh, gold is trading down 23 at 1977. That moved to the high around about 2076 on the continuous contract uh, four sessions ago. Uh, that might stand as the high just for at least a little while. At the same time, I drew in a rectangle here to say that between 1978 and probably 19, I think it was 42, but let me just double check. And 19... Uh, 
24, sorry, 1924. Uh, that's a 50 point range. I think we could be chopping around there for a little bit. If you look at the weekly chart, there's a good chance that we've got a long legged doji candle. Whoops, 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 1978. Nope. We've got a very interesting candle coming up here. Uh, we'll see where it closes on the day, but it is leg E, and that is a leg C in the monthly chart. Uh, this is, look, at this point, it's a monthly chart, but if this was a weekly chart, I'd say this is Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle at a high. If it, at any point it's able to close in a shorter time frame, monthly, so let's just imagine it was a weekly, I'd say on a daily basis or intraday basis, if it managed to close above 20.20 20 at any stage, there's a good chance it's going to try to worm its way back to the most recent high. This is the upside down Chapman Wave Roman candle, and if it starts to close, for two sessions below the uh, low of the bar, remember this is, I'm just using this as an example, and that would be below 1903, um, then there's a good chance it's going to go lower. All right, that's just the way we look at those things. So this is silver. Now, this is very interesting. Remember, I had said uh, earlier in the week when I was doing the show, I said there's a chance that silver will play catch up. And my experience has been that gold leads the way in chart formation. Silver then follows then gold kind of stalls as silver plays catch up and then has a better looking chart and as they're both looking pretty good that's when they both pull back all right so let's see where silver is right now silver there it is silver made a, a peak e also four sessions ago uh, so far it's holding a little bit better than gold's down 13 at uh, ticks at 26.12 um same thing in the weekly chart, leg C, and the monthly chart, really, that monthly chart, let me uh, make it smaller because you want to see exactly what it looks like. And I'm just saying to you, uh, the monthly chart has improved a lot. It's not great, but it has improved a lot. It's just holding in a rectangle formation, basically going sideways. So the metals, the silver and gold, are in play. So I suspect that any decent pullback, and you can start to see another rally, because gold certainly, as I always say, gold is the fear icon. That's where geopolitically, that's where big money goes when there's nervousness about the geopolitical situation, geopolitical, eco economic, but more geopolitical. In this particular case, we're looking at the dollar. The dollar had a really strong move up to 99.42, uh, four sessions, five sessions ago, holding very nicely up 17 ticks at 98.67. So this is what I look. I look at the dollar as the American icon of economic, I'm not going to say success, of economic strength. Let's just say that. Internationally, and that's where the dollar comes in, that's where money seems to flow. Uh, I'll be doing more of this when I do Larry's show later on. It's not, of course, it's not Larry. It's Larry's time. Definitely not Larry's show. There's only one Larry Pesavento, and uh, he he commands that show. I mean, he's, a, he, he's always a major attraction. There's no question about it with all his knowledge. I love those stories. I don't know how he remembers. He says, um, on Tuesday, yeah, it was Tuesday, November the 3rd, 1963. Oh, yeah, I remember it. We were sitting on the armchair, and I, I don't know how he remembers. Oh, it, it was uh, Joe, whatever, Smith. I, yep, yep. And, you know, I don't know. Bravo. I don't know how anyone can do that. Great memory. So, all right, there we go. Um, the dollar is holding okay. EUR, I'll do more of this when I do the um, currencies and commodities in the next show. Um, so we're looking at this trend line. Look at this major trend line in the weekly chart of the... Oh, I wanted to show this. I'll do more of it, but I just want to show you the pattern. Remember, these very big arch formations that do they do a beautiful left side, right side price time to the um, plumb line match. This is the plumb line right here. And that says that by, there's a chance that 1.06364, I bet it's changed. That was the number I put in. The March... This is the week of March the 27th, 2020, 1.063, yeah, 6. That's the level that could be hit. The uh, euro right now is at 1.09571. Oh, Jesus, numbers. How do, how do you deal with that stuff? And we're coming down to the Chapman Wave. I usually make this a dashed line, and I usually make it pink on the way down and green on the way up. It's called the Chapman Wave. Inside wedge, particular way of, of tracking it, target support line on the way down. 
And it says that there's a chance that by the 15th, the week of the 15th of April, it could be before, but by then, 1.0636 would be a target. That would say the dollar has a chance to redo or retest the highs. Let's do, I want you to do high-grade copper, high-grade copper. Um, this is very interesting. Look, you've had a cup and another cup. It's like a, it's like a uh, bifocals, right? I used to call it uh, something else. I'm not allowed to anymore. It's a pity because even the person that I called it for would have just loved it and thought it was an honor. But I'm not going to do that. Um, but this is a leg D in the weekly chart in high grade copper. Let's just get out of that because I want to show you. This is a peak E at 5.02, I think it is. Let's see, 5.0395. On the, tw on the 7th of March, we've pulled back sharply, and this is a leg D in the weekly chart, and it's done this almost the same. I'm going to do this in Larry's show, because it's done almost the same number of bars to the left side. This is what I call tap wave left side, right side price tie match. Uh, we'll talk about it later on. So it's a leg C. It's only a leg C in the monthly. Uh, don't worry. We'll get to it in, in, in the next hour. Meantime, back at the ranch, we're looking at U.S. bonds. U.S. bonds are down again. Oh, they're up 11.30 seconds at 1.55 and 2.30 seconds. They hit that 200 period moving average. Peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology is where you, you lift your foot off the accelerator momentarily, hover over, you got the, the orange light, you hover over it because you could turn around. Objective in the Chapman Wave buy signal to buy mode is to get to at least the peak D. That's where other things can happen. In this case, the other things is we hit one 60. This is a continuous contract. 160, and let's call it a half. And right now we're at 155. <laughs> Unbelievable. The TLT shows it even better. That didn't even make a peak D. It went to a peak C minus and failed in the dreaded H. It looks a little more like an inverted V shaped pattern. And look at this plummets. All right. Okay. I wanted to finish up with those because we're going to do a lot more when I do the next hour. Most importantly, I wanted to show you. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah, so cyber. I just wanted to go to this. Heck is the cyber symbol that I look at. This is a prime cyber security ETF security. I had a question in the den. Hi, Basil. Could you please go over CIBR? It is at peak A and in a downward channel since November. It tried to break out of the channel and now back in it. What could be an entry price? So we're talking about this. It's exactly the same pattern as hack. I'll go to the cyber. I don't have it all notated like I do uh, s uh, the hack. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is up. I'm Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, I, I, what, I like to do chart patterns all the time. So look, here's the one minute E-mini. You see this rectangle? When you go to a rectangle, it's unbelievable how many rectangles we've had. So this is the one minute chart. Look at the rectangle there. I can go, look, there was a rectangle there, a long, very long, narrow rectangle all the way from the, after the spike this morning, it traded in a range of about 43.22 to about 43.05. Just stuck there for a long, long time. Finally broke down, held the 200 period moving average, walked the 200 period moving average, but couldn't run. So it broke down and that became resistance. So it's really important in this kind of rectangle formation that there is, a, if there's a significant breakout, either way, up or down, it needs to go sharply above the resistance line. In this case, 42.74 would be, and hold above that. And then it says, aha, now the 200-period moving average of 42.80 could be our target. All of these techniques I'm mentioning now, because this is what we, this is what I apply for subscribers to my opening call. Now, we want to go back. We were looking at uh, the... Um, Hack, which is the prime cybersecurity, and the CIBR, which is a different company. It's a First Trust NASDAQ Cyber. Okay, so the patterns are almost the same, except this went to peak A, pulled back, great peak A because the stochastic only held above 80% briefly and then it pulled back sharply to 65. And now there's been a rally attempt this morning and it's pulling back again. Yes, yes, the importance of the 200 period moving average. So where would an entry entry price be? I'm watching this so closely. Why on earth has cyber been so horrible? Um, let me just go back to heck because I've got this all notated. Look at this. It went to peak C at about 67, 97 back in November, mid-November. And it's just plunged since then. It's gone down to 50. And this is the cyber area. I don't understand. Of course, you've got CrowdStrike with fantastic earnings, and it's still way near the low. 150 has been the low on the 24th of Jan. Successful dreaded H pattern ran up to almost a 200 period moving average. If there is a move in cyber towards the 202 level, that 200 period moving average then becomes a magnet. Remember, it broke down from it before. So I'm thinking there, there are only one at PAN, P A N W. So, um, see, Pan, Pan, Palo Alto Networks, Inc., Cybersecurity, PANW, trading up 53 cents on a day like this, and 552.38. There's something wrong. It's either specific company, I don't know what it is, but to have such, to have these cybersecurity stocks not leading the charge to the upside, this is the best one. It is off the all time high of about 600, it's at 553, it's not a big deal. Almost all the other ones like Cyber, CBI, this is Cyber Arc, uh, 153 right now, has a high in the 200 area. I, I don't know what's going on, so now let me go back. Your question is when to enter, that's why I'm taking a little time here. So I'm just going to say to you, Cyber, C-I-B-R, and that is this uh, NASDAQ, first trust NASDAQ Cyber Security ETF, I don't like what I'm seeing because it's not leading the market. It's just kind of hanging in there. 
So I would do this. First of all, I, I, I think you do use options. I would take an option on cyber if you can get it at 48.99. I think it's going to be retesting the 48.50 area, which is the 200 pre moving average. And if it goes under that, then I think it makes a generation, even takes out and goes towards the 47 level. It's so important that even today it can correct its negativity. It's down 20 cents. I'm going to make two suggestions. One is you wait. And I would prefer to see just a nibble, a starting position closer to 48.54. I know we're doing 50 cents, and the last high was at 51 something. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is the technicals are really not helping. The nine is over the 14, but it's starting to fizzle. So I'm going to suggest why don't you look at an April call option if you're really interested in this? Preferably go in the money a little bit. It's a 49.02 right now. If you can get a 47 and a half, I would just start off like that. You know exactly what you can lose, but you also know that you're getting a really good feeling when the premium comes in. That is, it's starting to work. It's a cheaper way of doing it, less expensive. Let's say not cheaper, but less expensive way. But I can't. If today, of all days, it can't actually hold the gain of 49.66, the high, and it's still much lower, all I can say is the best thing is either get do the option, the call option for April, preferably in the money. So I, I, I wouldn't risk just throwing away money at, at 50. I don't even know if it'll hold there. If it even hits it once or twice, it doesn't look like it has the strength. <clears throat> so that's what I'm talking about. So that's all I'm saying. You, I, it's not, it's, I've tried my best to keep it in our, for subscribers, in our focus, the whole area. It's, something's wrong in this environment. You think cyber security starts, I mean, they should be on fire. They should be way at the highs and they're not. So, but I would like to have a position because I think at some point they're going to become in favor. But what? You get the hack, you get in at 55, uh, 53 right now. And suddenly it starts to fail, holding 53, and goes back to the low. I don't know. This is not a great-looking chart. So that's all I'm saying. I'm done. Um, I, I'm a little nervous about giving you a full, full-throated, yes, start your positions. I'd say, mm, I don't know. But if you're really interested, you could buy an option call. It might be the best way. Okay, next question is TLT. Um, yeah, TLT, just this is saying rates are going higher. And um, if you, let me do this. If you're looking at the TNX.X and the Fed, oh, the question is, why is the Fed reluctant to raise rates? They've talked about it enough. And my answer to that is, um, it's a twofold answer. And the answer is, based on the reality of the stock market, it's really tough for them to do that. Based on the um, on what they've been saying for this amount of time, they're really obligated to do something. So I think it's just like quarter points. Do they, they have to be worried about inflation. I mean, inflation has been here for a while. Now it's really accelerating and it doesn't just go away. And I don't see it going away. Remember, I, my, my theory here is that if we lost... If this war, this war goes on for three weeks, three to four weeks, it just it, it can't just stop on a dime. The commitment on every side. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is the the bill that's just about to be passed. What two thousand seven hundred pages or something? Nobody's hardly anybody's read it. But you remember my rule of thumb: the fine print in any bill eventually becomes the large print. So all the little things, all the little boondoggles, all the little stuff that was thrown in there, all those favors to other people, those become prime at some point later on. And all the big headlines just fades away. Can we afford to do a, a trillion, one point one, one and a half trillion? I'll leave it as a hanging question. I'll be back in a moment and we'll wrap up this section and then we're going to go to for the next hour, uh, which I'm actually looking forward to very much because I'm going to be able to go through coffee, uh, uh, feeder cattle, just all sorts of things are happening if we haven't looked at. I'll be back in a moment.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, you can see that this rectangle, the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. This is from about uh, um, just before 10 this morning. It's stuck in a tiny rain. Just broke above it, but you're ready to see uh, 42.74, 42.75, and then that 42.78, 200 period moving average in the one-minute E-mini chart. So far, the green line says it's in a buy mode, and it can hold that way for a little while. We'll see what happens there. Okay, real quickly. And then some of the follow through I'll do during Larry's show. So the TNX is, is running up very nicely. We'll see if it's going to get into the 2.1 area sometime in March. That's going to be a big deal. Um, so, yes, the question Neo uh, GT last night you sent a thing. Uh, Neo, I've been negative on Neo for a long time, made a high of 66.91 uh, back in January, I think it was 2021. Electric cars, vehicles, I think this is Chinese. And it goes from 66.99 to today's low of 16.92. And the other one you were talking about is, uh, it was Neo and, oh, where did I write it? I wrote it, wrote it, wrote it, wrote it, wrote it, wrote it. Mm -hmm. Oh, JD. JD, this is also JD. This is in the uh, commerce area. Uh, JD, uh, JD.com, what is it called? JD.com. Yeah, JD.com, also I believe Chinese. Look at that, smash to the downside. And I've been talking about being negative. The FX, I don't know why, we didn't even short it. I've been negative for ages and ages and ages. And here's FXI going from 54.33. This is the China Big Caps uh, Fund, February of 2021 and 54. Today, 29. This is a fund, folks. This is not, this is China. So, okay, that was that, 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 that. I got just quickly before we wrap up. 
Um, yeah. Oh, and the Boston area, you remember I said back in November, I think I said, if there is a storm, a big snowstorm on any particular day, my experience tells me that that gets repeated throughout the season, that the majority of storms come on that day. Well, it's been the weekend, this weekend on Saturday night. If you get another storm, I'll come that I'll be back and I'll be doing I'll be doing the hour, not very present show. I'll be doing the hour the very day. We go a whole bunch of commodities. Uh, watch the spark real close. It does a for at least to be up to 285. 